Trevor Bungay is a retired Canadian sergeant. He is a member of Vanguard, a company that connects soldiers with PTSD to ketamine clinics. They have partnered with Field Trip, a Canadian ketamine clinic with a location in Oromocto. Uh, so I was recruited to the military in February 1997. Um, I served 18 years um, with seven international missions. Uh, served in Bosnia, Africa, Haiti, and four tours to Afghanistan. Uh, during my time in Afghanistan, our company had well over a hundred gun battles and saw uh, lots of destruction throughout that whole time. Um, in 2007, I came home a completely different person and struggled with post-traumatic stress pretty much until I retired in 2014 when I was medically released after 18 years. Can you tell me about the first time you were in a firefight? Uh, the first time I was in a firefight was kind of really surreal, I guess. Um, we had just been out in a, in a certain area in Panjue in Afghanistan and we were patrolling as a company and uh, our platoon was split off from the rest and there was a lot of chatter on the radio. Uh, you just kind of could feel the energy changing and you knew something was going to happen. And uh, shortly after, we heard uh, radio traffic saying that a platoon was under contact. And as soon as I heard that on the radio, we had got bumped ourselves by the Taliban. Uh, everybody just started jumping for ditches um, and getting under cover. And I just remember just standing there. And I remember a friend of mine telling me later, he's like, you're just standing there, it was like rain in the stand. He's like, there was just bullets coming all around. And then all of a sudden you just quicked up and, and jumped into the, into the wadi. Uh, I remember that day because I remember seeing the guy in the ditch the next day in that, in that uh, firefight. And we kind of looked at each other and we're like, is this real? Like, this, is this really happening? Is this not a movie? And then it was like, this is the real deal. Like, this is war, here we go. And we fought for about three months straight, six, seven, eight hours a day, depending. So can you tell me a little bit about this sort of psychological difference of being overseas and then coming back home? Um, well, you know, like, I loved being in Afghanistan and people were always like, you know, why are you going back? And I just, in Afghanistan, you have one thing that you have to do and that's survive. You want to live and, and come home and protect everybody that's on your shoulders and uh, everybody that's, that's around. And coming home and having more things to deal with, uh, family is back, you have to pay bills again, you know, there's a mortgage payment, you have to do your regular work duties. Uh, and still, uh, after fighting in a war, someone expects you to come home and be normal. And to completely be honest, it's just not possible. Once you've been to war, you don't come back the same. So did you try other uh, medicines and therapies before getting into psychedelics? Um, once I retired from the military, I was put on a, just I think it was 22 pills a day, prescription pills. And as soon as I took the prescription drugs, uh, I became a completely different person. Uh, and within six months, I was, uh, attempting suicide. So did, did it just like take all the emotion out of your life? What type of things did it make you feel? Yeah, like I just, yeah, I was emotionless. I was, uh, really, I was a zombie. I, I just, I couldn't even really uh, gather my own thoughts to even go get therapy or get the help I needed. I, I was just basically living and breathing and I felt like every minute of the day I was taking another pill. It completely overtook my life. Do you know how many uh, of your friends have committed suicide? To be honest, I, pro I stopped counting after 30, um, but right now I'm, I'm probably up around 38. Heidi Fitzgerald is a therapist that has decades of experience in treating PTSD. 
After looking at the data regarding ketamine and post-traumatic stress, she decided to join the staff at Field Trip. So ketamine, um, it has um, an effect on the brain that allows more glutamate to be present in uh, the nerve cells at the synapse. And glutamate creates a feeling of openness, of connection, and also it's mood enhancing. So it can have very rapid effects on reducing depression. Well, ketamine is a dissociative anesthetic. That's, um, it was developed as an anesthetic. So with a dissociative dose, which, you know, may be a psychedelic dose, but could also be an anesthetic dose, which is not what we want to aim for here. We don't want people to be unconscious during the experience. The goal is for them to have an experience that they can connect with. Can you describe the physical sensations of being on ketamine? Yeah. So once, once the ketamine settles in and uh, you lay back, for me, um, I get a rush of, um, I don't know if it's emotion or just uh, anxiousness or just the medicine setting in, but I feel like I'm being blasted off into space and, and I look out and I'm just sort of away from my body and I'm able to just sort of look into my mind a little bit and, and look at my, my traumas and, and feel it. So can you uh, speak about any of the possible negative side effects? With street use, ketamine can have uh, a negative effect on internal organs. Uh, that's never been the case in the context of treatment. Is there any risk of uh, a psychotic break? Ketamine doesn't contribute to psychosis. What, what do you do if a patient starts having a bad trip? So we don't talk about bad trips. We talk about challenging experiences. And not all of the things that arise within your mind when you're having a psychedelic experience are fun or positive. So we teach people how to manage that in the context of the experience. We talk about connecting to the anchors, their breath, the music. Um, we talk about reminding themselves to let go and to go into and through the experience. How do you think ketamine and psychedelics more broadly could change our society? I always said that if I could give every person just one psychedelic trip, it would change the world. What you can see and the love that you can feel and the compassion that you can find and the empathy that you can have is, is everything that psychedelics is and is exactly what people need, especially today. Are there any sort of particular hallucinations you experienced on ketamine that stand out to you? Um, one of my biggest problems in my trauma is I learned to dig myself into a self-hate hole and uh, blame myself for problems that, you know, are really not my fault. Um, so for me, when I use psychedelics right now, uh, my mission is to gain some self-love in myself because I don't have much. Um, so one of the trips that I had in general was I was having a rough day and uh, they, it took me to a beach where I was on this big white horse. I was wearing knight's armor. I could see through the mask of the, of the metal mask, you know, just like you would picture it. And I had this long pole and we were just riding on the beach. There, it was just me and the horse. And all of a sudden, these hearts started coming down from the sky, and I was puncturing them with this staff, and sort of they were sticking to the staff, and 
but there was blood just splattering all over my metal, like getting into the every orifice. You could just see everything just coming in on me, and I was completely covered on it. And then when I finally got to the end of the beach, it was so calm and peaceful that I knew I was just showering myself with my own love. And it was probably one of the most beautiful trips I ever had and clearest, to be honest. <laughs>